Hello everybody. I have been back into action only to finish the things off pertaining to your short play A Sunny Morning here and today. So, I would like to cordially welcome you all back to today's session. Now, I will make you people to remember what I taught you the other day. In our previous class, what we came across is that the gallant horsemen are Lavo who was in love with the, the silver maiden or Lara Laurenti waited under her room's window only to hear her song. Meantime, he accidentally met the local merchant whom the parents of Lara Laurenti married her to. This is how we were also introduced to the another character, the merchant. And later, the merchant, after having met the gallant lover nearby Lara Laurentiis' room, he had insulted or humiliated the gallant lover. Both of them later took the quarrel upon themselves and started using the verbal attacks on them and later the quarrel that turned into a fight using their physical organs only to defeat and later as the fight got to progress between them as they kept attacking each other the merchant was severely injured as a result of having a fight he was badly wounded. So, the gallant lover found no way at all to escape from the clutches or control out of the merchant and his fellows. So, the situation that he was in that necessitated the gallant lover to hide his face at least for few days and later he had to run away out of Valencia and later what did we get to see is that both Donalara and Don Gonzalo kept talking to each other about how did they come to know about the romantic love story of two young lovers and both of them concluded saying that they came to know by their one of her friend and one of his cousin. That is how they came to know the story of the romantic love story in between the two young lovers. And later we were carried on to the another aspect that is when Donalara asked Don Gonzalo a question that is how do you report the behavior of your cousin gallant lover that is how she asked him a question how do you make a report on the behavior of your cousin and they after being asked such a question from Dona Lara Don Gonzalo gave an account about his cousin so that he narrated a story about a gallant lover the young man or the gallant lover after causing uh, so much of harm to the merchant he took a shelter in uh, Don Gonzalo's house and uh, why did he take such a shelter in the house of this uh, Don Gonzalo is that he had a fear of the consequences as he did so much of harm to the local merchant in a fight who was uh, highly regarded or considered in his locality or region he was a rich merchant in his locality he had a number of fellows behind him so after having such a fearful consequences uh, that is left in him he sought the help of 
this don gonzalo and he took the shelter in his house after residing few days in his home he took his departure out of the house of this don gonzalo and he stepped his foot out of his house and later he came to seville which was known for holding the sport called it as bullfighting and later he had come to madrid city which was a capital city of spain after reaching this madrid city he had written many letters to lara lorente who was his beloved girl and some of those letters were written only in the form of poem but uh, there was no doubt at all as uh, all those letters were written by the gallant horseman or lover all those letters were intercepted or received by the parents of lara lorente so she never ever answered to the letters of gallant lover so gonzalo thought that he would lose his love forever so he was left in a despair all the time his life was uh, filled with uh, a sadness he believed that he had lost his love forever and ever and later he had joined the army and moved to africa there when he was in the service of the nation when he was hiding himself only to get protected from his enemies when he was in the trench when he was hiding himself in the trench only to get protected from the his enemy soldiers e was a shot dead which means uh, he met with a glorious death that is how he made himself to die after telling a lie story after telling a countess uh, fictitious countess uh, fictitious story about himself in front of this uh, Don Alara wanted to conceal his identity. How was he died? Is that he took hold of uh, the flag of his nation very firmly in his hand, even at even uh, on the verge of his death, he whispered his beloved girl's name, Lara Lorente. after having heard this story from don gonzalo dona lara spoke to herself saying that what an atrocious lie he told me and later don gonzalo in contrast to the above story that he told to lara he remarked dona lara that the silver maiden who was in love with this gallant lover she was not in a position to show her uh, resentfulness after losing her beloved gallant horseman in contrary to the feelings of the gallant lover lara lorente within a short duration of her time she was chasing the butterflies in her garden which means she didn't concern about her gallant lover and she she was not even in a position to show her regretfulness and later after having received those words from don gonzalo lara lorente didn't accept with the opinion of don gonzalo and later don lara started weaving an another lie before this 
Don Gonzalo as he did earlier. What she was trying to tell Don Gonzalo is that the silver maiden who was in love with the gallant horseman she was not that kind of a woman she said her friend as she introduced this uh, silver maiden as her friend she called her uh, as a friend her friend waited for the news of uh, her beloved uh, gallant horseman for few days and later she passed uh, months too and uh, she even no uh, passed a year too but uh, she received no letter from his beloved from her uh, beloved gallant horseman so she was also in the despair mean time one afternoon at the time of at the time when the sun set himself in the western horizon wanted to bring us the night when the first stars were appearing in the sky this uh, silver maiden was uh, seen stepping her foot outside of her house with uh, a quickening steps she made her way towards uh, the beach where her beloved gallant horseman had risked his life after making a so much of uh, harm to the merchant after making an injury to him that is how he put his life in a risk after having reached the beach the silver maiden had written her beloved name on the sand and she took her seat on a rock which was seen in a little distance on the shore of that sea and later she had an intent look or she fixed her eyes upon the horizon as she, as if she kept to thinking about her beloved boy or gallant lover even the waves murmured a lot which means so even the waves of the sea sang a song that is an eternal trinity which means so it is a song that is dedicated only to a dead person even the waves of that sea made a lot of noise singing a singing an eternal trinity it is a sing only for lamentation and later the waves of that sea slowly crept up to the rock they passed on to the rock and uh, touched her foot where she sat on the rock and uh, the rising and uh, falling of the sea level that made a lot of noise as it uh, came up to the shore and uh, it had carried the silver maiden towards the sea after going back into it it had carried her away which means so it swallowed her this is how the life of silver maiden came to an end this is how dona lara lied a story or this is how she told a fictitious story only to conceal her identity this is where i stopped presenting let us make a move on to another slide and here what do we see is that dan gonzalo after having heard 
the concoct fictitious story of dona lara he shows is a surprise saying good heavens that's what we call when you people must ask yourself a question when should we use this uh, good heavens when you are surprised to hear or when you are surprised to see something we can make use of this good heavens through our verbal language verbal actions so don gonzalo after having heard that fictitious story about lara lorente by dona lara he shows his wonder saying good heavens which means he is surprised to hear those words from dona lara dona lara the fisherman of the to show and usually we see that a group of fishermen used to live their life on the shore by building a, a hut on the shore of the sea the fisherman of the to show shore in a sense it is a edge of water of the sea that's what we call the show the fisherman of the to show who often tell the story affirm that it was a long time before the waves washed away the name that was written on the sand the fisherman of the to show they frequently told a story they affirmed affirmed in the sense uh, confirmed that they made a confirmation about uh, the story it was a long time before the waves washed away the waves who come on to the shore they would do go back to join the sea and when the waves come on to the shore those waves have washed away the name that is written on the sand in the fictitious story that was told by dona lara to don gonzalo in the story she told gonzalo that after reaching the beach the silver maiden had written her beloved gallant horseman's name on the sand the same name that was written on the sand that was washed away when the waves came onto the sand this was told by the fisherman and this is what dona lara tries to tell don gonzalo here the fisherman they frequently tell a story they have made a confirmation over here it took a long time before which means uh, this uh, incident that happened a long time before the waves and even the waves that washed away that name that was written on the sand as it was written by the silver maiden that was washed away by the waves aside you will not get ahead of me in decorating my own funeral funeral after uttering those words before don gonzalo she speaks to herself that is you will not get ahead of me ahead in a sense in front of me what is she trying to tell don gonzalo is that he will not get ahead of me in decorating her own funeral funeral in a sense it is a ceremony only to held uh, it is a ceremony held for the dead person and even this don gonzalo if he sees dying of this dona lara even he can't get himself ahead of her in decorating in making a decoration of her funeral that's what we call in kannada uh, shiva samskara and even he sees uh, the dead body of uh, dona lara even he can't uh, make uh, arrangements or uh, 
डेकोरेशन टू अर फ्यूनरल डॉन गॉन्सो असाइड शी लाइस वर्स दैन आई डू ही कम्स टू नो दट शी लाइस एज ई डज अर्ली इन अ वेरी लो वॉइस नॉट लेटिंग डोनलर टू हियर इवन अ सिंगल वर्ड ई स्पीक्स टू इमसेल्फ दट शी लाइस शी टेल्स अ फिक्टिशियस स्टोरी and this is how he realizes uh, how she views a story about herself and she considers the he considers that uh, she lies worse which means uh, very bad she tells a story very bad than he does this is how he consider and uh, leto donalara sympathizes with the position of her friend that is the silver maiden one who committed suicide on the shore of the sea after being taken away into the sea by the waves dona lara shows herself a uh, shows lara lorente a sympathy over here so she tells don gonzalo that she was which means lara lorente was a poor woman so she says has ear she was a poor poor lara that's what she tells don gonzalo ear this is how we come to know that how dona lara shows her sympathy on the condition of lara lorente after committing a suicide don gonzalo also does the same thing as dona lara has done in the previous statement by saying poor gonzalo and this is how he also shows his sympathy over the actions of gallant lover after losing his life while hiding his hiding himself in a trench that is how he was shot dead by his enemy don gonzalo has shown his sympathy over his cousin so he says that poor gonzalo and uh, here we can use uh, the term poor after when we put ourselves in a position to show our sympathy we can make use of this word poor donalara aside i will not tell him that i married 2 years later now donalara speaks to herself in a very low voice she mutters to herself not letting this don gonzalo to now what is what is she trying to tell herself in a very low voice she speaks i will not tell him that i married 2 years later in a story in a conversation as she kept talking to this don gonzalo nowhere she will not tell this old man or don gonzalo that she had married 2 years later after receiving no letter from her beloved gallant lover actually she didn't uh, lose her life it was a concoct or fictitious story told by dona lara to don gonzalo after seeing the disappearance of uh, her beloved boy the gallant horseman for 2 years she married to someone else two years later and this is what she tries to tell don gonzalo here and this fact is not told to don gonzalo that's what she says here i she will not tell anything about the fact that she has married two years later to someone else and later 
what do we see is that it is a don gonzalo turn to say more don gonzalo aside as a donalara does in a very low voice it is a don gonzalo turn to speak more in a very low voice aside in a three months within a short duration of a three months only he ran off to paris with a ballet ballet dancer within a short duration of a three months uh, already we came to know the fictitious story that was woven by don gonzalo and actually he wasn't uh, died in a trench after saying uh, such a fictitious story within a, a short duration of a uh, 3 months even after receiving no letter from his beloved girl lara lorente within a short duration of a 3 months he had eloped to paris with a ballet dancer who was trained in her dancing that's what he tells dona lara here he had run off to paris which is the capital city of france with a ballet dancer ballet in the sense ballet dancer which means so who gets a trained in that area of dancing with such a ballet dancer this gallant horseman or lover eloped with her to paris dona lara fate is so curious which means so the fate or destiny it is always a strange no one can depict what our fate is really and you people might know that even we can't predict our future no one can predict their future no one can predict is her, her future and this this is what she says us here fate is always a curious one which means the mysterious one unexpected things always happen to a human beings in a mysterious way so face our fate or destiny it is always so a curious one the strange one which means the strange things always so uh, keep uh, happening to the human beings here are you and i what is she trying to tell don gonzalo is that here or at the present time when both of them have sit to themselves in the park very next to each other she tells don gonzalo that here in this park are you and me only both of us are sitting each other on the same bench talking to each other from uh, since a long time we have been discussing about a, a romantic love story of a two young lovers that's what she tries to tell don gonzalo here here we are only two here you are here you uh, here are you and me only completely we are strangers when both of them have met each other in the park after getting seated each other on the same bench both of them were a complete strangers both of them haven't met each other both of them have been completely uh, completely strangers which means that they were uh, unfamiliar they were uh, unfamiliar each other they do not know each other Bo- they met by chance after having seen each other's face after having uh, seated each other on the same bench they met by chance accidentally they met each other which means that is how events happen uh, when they when the events uh, they are not uh, planned which means uh, they haven't planned each other to meet in a park 
as they are completely strangers both of them have met each other accidentally by a chance they met each other discussing the romance of old friend old friends of long ago though we were strangers we were discussing since a long time we were discussing for a long time about the romantic romance uh, about the romantic love story of old friends of long ago and that is how the fate fate is always curious that is always so a strange one we have been discussing each other the romance of the old friends of long ago that happened a long ago that took place that took place so uh, many years ago there is how they kept talking to each other about the romantic love story of the old friends though they are completely strangers we have been conversing as if we were old friends now she tells don gonzalo that both of them have been conversing each other since a long time since they're coming into the park though they had a verbal attack in the initial stage after having seated each other they managed to converse each other in a very loving manner as if they were old friends which means they have been conversing each other after taking a pinch of snuff after establishing a kind of uh, after establishing a friendship between them they have been conversing each other as if they were old friends that is how the old friends keep talking to each other in the similar manner in the same way both of them have been conversing each other dan gonzalo s yes, the fate is always curious dan gonzalo accepts with the words of Don, dona lara saying that the fate is always curious one which means the strange one which means the people can't predict the fate or destiny or our future which means unexpected things always happen to human beings that is what he also admits with the opinion of dona lara here yes it is always a stranger one strange one considering the ill natured prelude to our conversation which means considering the ill natured prelude which means uh, both of them when they met each other for the first time after having seated uh, on the same bench they had a uh, you know irritable what we call irritable or an unpleasant uh, conversation between them that's what we call ill natured ill natured prelude in a sense uh, what comes uh, before before this time what comes uh, in between them that makes them to have something else in the upcoming time that is what we call in the previous time when they met each other they had a verbal attack they started accusing each other that's what we call ill natured that that uh, verbal attack that um, as a paved a way to don gonzalo and dona lara to have a friendship between them that's what we call prelude what we call it in kannada is that munnudi aitu anta hen karithivalla adanna navu prelude anta karithave which means what happens sometimes before that paves a way or that makes a way to happen something else in the future that's what we call prelude what uh, happens in the upcoming moments of don gonzalo and lara in the park is that they have a friendly conversation though they had a verbal attack in the previous uh, moments that's what we call prelude and considering the ill natured prelude to our conversation though they had a verbal attack on each other that has paved a way to their a uh, friendly conversation later 
and uh, again Donna Lara tells uh, Don Gonzalo that you scared away the birds again she recalls uh, Don Gonzalo that when you come into presence in this park you scared away the birds which uh, were feeding on my crumbs thrown by me has uh, she had thrown some bread pieces uh, towards the pigeon as they were approaching towards her all those uh, pigeons were uh, feeding those bread crumbs on her uh, bread crumbs and when don gonzalo entered into the park along with his uh, servant zunaito he had scared or frightened away the birds he caused the birds to go away from the presence of lara though they were eating because they were they feared the presence of gonzalo and zunaito so they had flown onto the branches of the tree though they were feeding on the crumbs thrown by lara again now she recalls uh, what happened in between them when uh, while don gonzalo entering into the park don gonzalo it was i was unreasonable unreasonable at that moment perhaps which means uh, uh, he was mindless uh, what we which means so uh, Uh, he was not in a position to give his attention at that moment that's what we call unreasonable in a sense so he was not acting according to the sense at that moment that's what we call unreasonable which means he put himself in a position where he couldn't show his concern over those pigeons as they were feeding on the crumbs of donalara that's what he says as ear he tells uh, donalara that at that moment when uh, all those pigeons were feeding those bread crumbs uh, i was mindless which means uh, as he was given a lot of pain in his uh, ankle or in his uh, leg he was unreasonable unreasonable which means uh, he was out of his uh, mind he couldn't be able to think of those pigeons at that moment as he was in search of uh, the bench that he wanted to do find to sit all alone donalara s yes, that was evident donalara tells don gonzalo that s yes, she admits with the statement of don gonzalo so she tells don gonzalo that uh, she admits before him that was evident which means uh, that became clearer before me i already came to know you were unreasonable you were out of your mind as you started entering into the park that become evident which means uh, he, she had clearly witnessed uh, the actions of don gonzalo as he entered into the park that's what she tries to tell don gonzalo here that becomes evident which means so she had witnessed everything how he had walked in sweetly which means in a very loving manner in a very loving voice or tone now donala donalara she asks don gonzalo a question here are you coming again tomorrow now donalara wants to know whether don gonzalo comes to the park again on tomorrow that's why she asks don gonzalo a question here only to only after having a mere curiosity to know whether he would come into the park or not only to now or quench her curiosity only to quench her curiosity she asks don gonzalo here are you coming again tomorrow to the park she asks such a question here in response to the above question don gonzalo reacts to donalara telling her that most certainly which means without a doubt 
Now he gives an assurance to Dona Lara, telling her that most certainly he would come to the park on the condition that now he puts a condition. What is it? Is that if it is a sunny morning, if we have a sunny morning, if we have a brighter sun on tomorrow's morning, definitely he would come to the park. That's what he tries to tell Lara here, uh, which means so uh, certainly in a sense, uh, without a doubt, there is no doubt at all in him. That's what he gives an assurance uh, to Lara here. He tells Lara that uh, he would come to the park without a doubt on the condition that uh, if it is uh, a sunny morning, if uh, he gets uh, a brighter day and tomorrow he would certainly come to the park and not only will I not scare away the birds as uh, he did today, he wouldn't uh, do some things on tomorrow. So he assures Donalara that he will not scare away the birds as he does it today. So he promises Donalara that he will not frighten away the birds, he will not cause the birds which will be feeding on the crumbs of Donalara even on tomorrow. He will not scare or frighten those birds away. That's what he tries to tell. He will, he will not make those pigeons to go out of the presence of Donalara. And he will not make those birds to go onto the branches of the tree. He will leave. He will leave those pigeons to feed those crumbs which will be thrown by Lara even at tomorrow. That's what he tries to tell Lara here. But, and rather, he promises Lara that he will bring a few crumbs on tomorrow. If he comes, if he gets a sunny morning on tomorrow, he will definitely come to the park. While coming into the park, he will certainly bring some crumbs to feed the pigeons as Donalara does every day. And later, what we see is that after having heard the words of assurance from Don Gonzalo, Donalara tells Gonzalo that thank you very much. Now, Donalara formally Thanks uh, Don Gonzalo very much, which means uh, now Dana Lara puts herself in a position where she can uh, show uh, where she can show her gratitude towards uh, this Don Gonzalo. After having heard the words of uh, Don Gonzalo when he tells Lara that uh, he will bring some crumbs uh, to feed the pigeons, uh, Lara feels very happy to hear those words from him. So, as she feels very happy, she shows her gratitude towards Gonzalo. So, Donalara thanks him very much. And she further adds that birds are very grateful. And she tells Don Gonzalo that if you feed the pigeons with a breadcrumbs, the birds are definitely a grateful which means so they would be uh, they would be grateful in a sense so they also show their gratitude the birds also show their gratitude which means so they are very thankful at you even the birds not only me even the birds who will be feeding on your crumbs and tomorrow they will be very grateful, they will show their gratitude or they will show their feeling of thankfulness towards you if you feed them with your bread pieces and not only they are grateful and they would repay attention 
which means they give back their attention towards you the complete focus will be paid towards you and today they had flown away onto the branches when you got entered into the park but if you bring some bread pieces and tomorrow even those who pigeons give back their attention or focus towards you i wonder where my maid is now she wants to call her maid or housemaid or house servant back to her that's why now she wonders now she surprises herself so donalara tells don gonzalo that she wonders or surprises where her maid is and to know more about where petra is now she surprises as she as a petra can't be seen everywhere now donalara starts watching all around the park she finds a row petra nowhere so as she finds so petra nowhere in the park she shows her wonder and later she wants to now petra where she is and later as she shows her wonder to know where her homemade petra is that is a female servant petra is a as i told people earlier petra was a female servant one who takes care of everything in her kitchen and uh, now she recalls or remembers her petra to know where her male servant is and now she calls her petra by calling her name very loudly petra now she calls aloud the name of her female servant petra signals of signals for her maid and now it is a signal in the sense it is a non verbal action which means so by using our finger or by pointing our finger towards so the direction at which we intend to show our direction by showing our finger towards by pointing our finger towards her petra after finding petra in the park she as a pointed her finger towards her that's what we call signals now dona lara signals her maid petra now dona lara calls her petra using her finger don gonzalo aside looking at lara whose back is turned in a very low voice don gonzalo now he speaks to himself in a very low voice not letting this dona lara to listen to the words of don gonzalo now he murmurs to himself looking at lara when dona lara turns her focus her direction towards her homemade to call her back at her this don gonzalo who sits next to her keeps looking at lara now he has fixed his eyes at lara as he takes this advantage as lara keeps walking keeps looking at his homemade to call her back this don gonzalo starts looking at lara at this time when don gonzalo looks at lara when he keeps looking at lara lara's back is turned toward gonzalo that's why he stares or he has fixed his eyes at lara as lara's back is turned at him as she calls her homemade or petra back to her as she is with her beloved god no no i will not reveal myself what he tries to speak himself is that no no i will not reveal myself the identity of don gonzalo 
is not revealed to Donna Lara as uh, Don Gonzalo keeps uh, talking to Donna Lara since he is coming into the park he will not reveal his uh, or tell his identity to this uh, old man that's what he makes a confirmation to himself no 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 way in my conversation with this old man with this dona lara i will not tell the truth that the same old aged 70 year man one who sits next to this dona lara at this present time in the park is none other than the gallant lover this fact is not told to lara i am grotes now which means uh, that's what we call now he completely changes his identity that's what we call grotesque uh, in the sense uh, he completely changes uh, the original shape or identity that's what we call grotesque which means uh, uh, earlier he was a gallant lover who had fallen in love with the girl that is uh, Lara Lorente but now and when he sits in the park all uh, along with the, this Dona Lara he has completely been changed which means he has not revealed his identity to Dona Lara now he has completely been changed which means his appearances is a physical appearance and uh, even uh, and uh, that is what we call the facial uh, appearance of uh, don gonzalo has completely been changed that is what we call the grotesque better that she recall the gallant horseman who passed daily beneath her window tossing flowers he speaks to himself that it could be more better to this uh, dona lara that she recall the gallant horseman i told you people in i told you people the other day when don gonzalo told a story to lara about a uh, romantic love story of uh, a cousin who had fallen in love with the silver maiden the gallant horseman though the gallant horseman was indeed don gonzalo he had hidden his identity and used to mention him as a gallant horseman gallant horseman what he did every day nearby the house of his beloved girl lara lorente is that the gallant horseman he passed every day on each morning beneath or under the window of his beloved girl lara lorente holding a bouquet of flowers in his hand hand had thrown a bouquet of flowers towards the window where the where the silver maiden had stood for a while to catch those bouquet of flowers that is what don gonzalo tries to tell dona lara here those who events or occurrences should be these occurrences uh, those occurrences uh, should be recalled that's what we call uh, that's what is uh, don gonzalo trying to tell don lara here it could be more better to don lara to recall or remember the same gallant horseman one who came to her house on sitting uh, on sitting the horse back on the rose path under her window taking a bouquet of flowers in his uh, hand and uh, tossing up those bouquet of flowers towards uh, the window which she caught 
and these incidents could be better to recall so that she might be pleased to remember those incidents this is what dam gonzalo says to or speaks to himself here donalara here she comes donalara after calling her homemade back to her she finds her petra coming back to her so she says that here she comes which means so petra comes so back to donalara here after having the scene the coming of petra donalara tells dam gonzalo that here my maid or petra comes back to me and what do we see next is that dam gonzalo that zunaito now he remembers is a mail servant zunaito he wants to call is a servant back as donalara does that's why dam gonzalo wants to get is zunaito back so he remembers him that is zunaito so he says that is zunaito he plays evoke with the nurse maids and what dam gonzalo thinks about this zunaito is that he plays evoke which means needless disturbance which is unnecessary at this moment with the nurse maids nurse maids in a sense a girl or a woman one who takes care of a children that is what we call nurse maids what do we call it in kannada is that dadiyaru and what is he trying to tell about zunaito is that he plays some havoc activities or which means so he plays so a needless disturbance he might disturb the nurse maids so in the park that's what he imagines about his zunaito he plays a he might give a needless to disturbance to the nurse maids in the park and looks toward the rights and signals with his hands and now after remembering is zunaito he wants to call his servant back so he keeps looking toward the right side of the park where is a male servant had gone earlier taking his departure out of this don gonzalo after being seated on the same bench with lara now don gonzalo he keeps looking toward the right side of the park where is a male servant had gone earlier and signals with his hands after finding zunaito after seeing the presence of his zunaito in the park he as used his finger to call is a male servant back to him so he signals with his hand to call his servant back to him now it is dona lara's turn to speak more as don gonzalo has done earlier in a very low voice now dona lara in a very low voice speaks to herself that looking at don gonzalo now she keeps looking at don gonzalo whose back is turned as don gonzalo keeps looking at the right side of the park to call his male servant back to him his back is turned toward donalara who sits next to him as he turned his attention or direction toward or as he turned his whole body towards the right side of the park where is maid where is a male servant is donalara looks at him and what she is trying to speak is that no i am too sadly changed now she says to herself that no no i am too sadly changed she also confesses herself that she is completely 
changed herself but uh, in her uh, younger age she was in love with the gallant horseman but now after departing from her beloved boy as she has reached her 70 years of age now she is completely changed even she doesn't want to reveal her identity even before her beloved boy don gonzalo so she speaks to herself that she is completely changed as don gonzalo as a changed himself as he is as is a completely grotesque that's what we call is a physical appearances so have been completely changed that's what we call he. that's so what is a donalara trying to tell, uh, speak herself she is also completely changed it is better that he should remember me as a black eyed girl tossing flowers as he passed among the roses in the garden and earlier in the previous class we got to see that gonzalo given account of the physical beauty of uh, is a beloved uh, woman lara larente in one of the paragraph and now she recalls the words of the words of the to don gonzalo what she says to herself is that it could be more better to don gonzalo to spend his rest of his life remembering me as a black eyed girl earlier don gonzalo opined that he opined that the gallant lover sorry the silver maiden with whom he was in love whom he called as a most beautiful woman he had ever seen in the locality of valencia he acclaimed or we call he prized the physical beauty of the silver maiden as she had a black eyed girl which means that resembles the color of a cow that a black eyed girl tossing the flowers and when the black eyed girl had stood very next to her window waiting for her beloved boy to come sitting on the horse back holding a bouquet of flowers and tossing those bouquet of flowers at her as he passed passed among the roses in the garden among the roses in the garden already we have witnessed the story that was told by don gonzalo earlier and it could be now she uh, speaks to herself that uh, it uh, could be more better to don gonzalo to remember me that uh, as that of a dark uh, eyed girl as uh, she stood uh, waiting for the arrival of her beloved boy as he tossed a bouquet of flowers uh, to <clears throat> bouquet of flowers at her and this is how she speaks to herself zunaito enters by right side and meantime the male servant of don gonzalo enters or comes to get his don gonzalo back to him and now from the right side of the park zunaito comes back to don gonzalo and petra at the same time or simultaneously petra comes to her donalara from the left side of the park she has a bunch of violets in her hand when she gets entered into the middle of the park into the corner of the park where petra and don gonzalo sit to each other on the same bench she has carried a bunch of flowers bunch in a sense a group of violets violets in a sense it is a, what we call a, it is a plant that has a, a small bluish a small bluish 
yellow and white colored flowers that's what we call violets which means it is a kind of a plant that has a bluish or yellowish and white colored flowers that's what we call violets and while coming to get our donalara back this petra has carried a group of violets in her hand and she takes a bunch of flowers in her hand to give it to donalara and later what do we see is that donalara after getting her homemade back she tells that she tells to petra that well petra at last which means uh, well which means uh, it is a, a way of uh, speaking to someone else where we can show our appreciation that's what we call good and uh, here donalara appreciates the way how petra comes back to her and that's why donalara puts herself in the position where she can show her appreciation towards this petra that's why she has used this word well after noticing her homemade petra before her and so donalara after finding the presence of her homemade petra in front of her she appreciates her saying that well which means good petra good at last you have come back which means so you have been back which uh, in another sense uh, we can call it uh, you get back to me and don gonzalo zunaito you are late in contrast to the above statement uh, don gonzalo in opposite to the above statement uh, what try, what don gonzalo tries to tell petra uh, tell zunaito is that zunaito you are late on addressing zunaito don gonzalo he admonishes him saying that he is very late in coming which means so after the expected time he has come to don gonzalo that's why he blames is a he scolds his servant male servant that is a zunaito saying he is very late in coming or in getting in getting back this don gonzalo petra to dona lara the god gave me these violets for you sinora now petra on addressing to her dona lara she tells dona lara that the god with whom she was in love had given her these violets only for this dona lara what is petra trying to tell dona lara is that the god one who keeps watching the coming and going out of the people one who would come and go outside of go outside of the park he had provided or given petra those violets which were held in her hand only for this dona lara that's why petra has offered those violets only to lara telling her that the god had given these violets only for you dona lara how very nice after having seen after having offered those violets from the hands of petra dona lara tells petra that how very nice they are she is pleased to get those violets from the hand of petra she feels very happy getting those violets from petra that's why she is surprised to see those violets as they are many as they are many in uh, many in color so she shows her wonder saying that uh, how good they are thank him for me now she tells petra that you tell my thanks at your god that's what donalara 
tells here she shows her gratitude or her feeling of thankfulness towards the god as she receives those violets from the hand of petra as they were offered by god so towards dona lara she would like to thank the god as she receives those violets from him they are fragrant what she feels is that all those violets smells very uh, smells in a very pleasing manner which could do make our organs organs to sense the sweet that's what we call fragrant which means so uh, it gives a pleasant smelling those violets so makes those violets make this donalara to be happy so she is left in a happy mood so all those who violets so make a, or create so the environment in a very uh, what we call a, all those who violets so uh, are pleasantly smelling that's what we call fragrant as she takes the violets from her maid a few loose ones fall to the ground as dona lara receives those violets or group of flowers from the hand of her own maid petra a few loose ones fall onto the floor and some few and some loose flowers which were not clearly tied to each other in the group of violets they were fallen they were of uh, they were fallen onto the ground as uh, dona lara made her way forward to take uh, those violets from the hand of uh, our uh, own maid petra and that's what do we see over here and uh, many loose ones fall to the ground when she Uh, attempts to take uh, those violets uh, from the hand of her own maid and uh, what do we see is that uh, and now don gonzalo tells uh, dona lara that my dear lady this has been a great honor and a great pleasure to me now don gonzalo he he is uh, pleased to see dona lara sitting next to him that's why in a very loving manner with love and respect uh, he says uh, that uh, my dear lady when do we use this so uh, when do we use these words is that uh, when we uh, show our love or our respect to someone else we can make use of these uh, words to show our uh, love my dear lady this has been the meeting or the uh, the meeting that we have today has been a great honor which means uh, he feels very happy after getting this uh, dona lara on the same bench that's why that's why he considers uh, this meeting has been a great honor to him he is highly rewarded with uh, the meeting he has had from he has had with this dona lara and the great pleasure which means so uh, he feels very happy the meeting that he has had with dona lara that makes him to be very happy that makes him to be pleased Uh, so he is left in a very happy mood after getting this uh, dona lara on the same bench after having a uh, so much of conversation between each other and now dona lara she says the same words as uh, don gonzalo does in the previous uh, statement it has also been a great uh, pleasure to me dona lara she tells don gonzalo that uh, it has been the meeting or the conversation that uh, both of them have had on this day when they met, have met each other in the park that has been a great pleasure for him she also opens the same as don gonzalo does in the previous statement the meeting that makes her to feel very happy she is also left in a very happy that's what we call pleasure pleasure in a sense very happy uh, which means so she is in a very happy mood as she gets this man in this park 
Don Gonzalo, goodbye until tomorrow. Now, Don Gonzalo, he wants to take his departure out of the park. That's why he wants to show his farewell to Donna Lara. So, she, so Don Gonzalo, uh, he shows his farewell towards Lara. Don Gonzalo tells Donna Lara here, Donna Lara, goodbye until tomorrow. Already we came to know that uh, if it was uh, if it is a sunny morning don gonzalo would be back uh, into the park on this condition he has given uh, an assurance to don lara so he has mentioned the word until tomorrow if it is a sunny morning he would be back uh, in this uh, park so until tomorrow it's a uh, goodbye that's what uh, don gonzalo tells uh, don lara over here next uh, what do we see is that uh, don lara until tomorrow now don gonzalo sorry don lara repeats the same word as uh, don gonzalo uses in the very uh, in the previous statement until tomorrow is it a good boy uh, so she has uh, repeated these uh, words uh, don lara until tomorrow it's a goodbye she also accepts uh, with the words of this uh, don gonzalo that's why until tomorrow uh, which means so uh, why she has uh, repeated these words is that uh, she has also accepted uh, with the words of this uh, don gonzalo so she makes uh, a more say, more uh, emphasis on this uh, word of until tomorrow which means uh, Donna Lara is affirmed in her action that uh, until tomorrow it's a goodbye. She wants to meet him back on tomorrow. That's why she has uh, repeatedly used this word until tomorrow. Don, Donna Lara, she has used uh, the word until tomorrow here. Only two emphasis on tomorrow sh she would be here in the park. Don Gonzalo, if it is a sunny me. And again, he makes Donna Lara to remember what he has told earlier to Lara that if it is a sunny morning, he would be back to the park. On this condition, he gives an assurance to Donna Lara. If it is a sunny morning, if tomorrow is a brighter day, definitely or without a doubt, he would be back to the park. Don Alara, a sunny morning, will you go to your bench? Don Alara admits with the words of Don Gonzalo. That's why now she has repeated the same words as she has done earlier. A sunny morning, if it is a sunny morning, I want to see your presence in this park. So, uh, she, as she wants to see the presence of this Don Gonzalo, she has repeatedly used these words as Don Gonzalo used earlier in his previous statement. Don Gonzalo, Don Lara, uh, she tells Don Gonzalo that a uh, sunny morning, will you go to your bench? Now she asks Don Gonzalo a question over here, which means. Uh, which means now she wants to know whether this Don Gonzalo, as he does it today, when he enters into the park, whether would he go to his bench? As she is in a curiosity to know whether he finds his bench, which he wants to have on his own. So she asks this Don Gonzalo a question here, Will he go to his bench in finding it out on tomorrow? If it is a sunny morning, we would uh, to be we would uh, be here in this park. After getting uh, our presence uh, back into the park, will you go to find your bench? That is what uh, Don Lara asks Don Gonzalo here. Don Gonzalo, no, I will come to this if you do not object. And now Don Gonzalo tells Don Lara that no, no. I will not go to find my bench back as uh, I did it today, today, 
as i did today instead of that what will he do is that he will come to the same bench has he as occupied as he as a sit on the bench on the same bench of donalara so he confirms donalara that he will come onto the same bench that is occupied by donalara today onto the same bench he will come come to if you do not object and he also puts a condition over here if she doesn't reject or if she doesn't oppose me definitely i will come to the seat donalara this bench is at your disposal now donalara gives so this don gonzalo a right or power to use her bench though it belongs to her this bench which is occupied by occupied by me is at your disposal disposal which means so now he has the right or he has the right to use the bench that's what we call disposal uh, a person one who gets the right of something is called a disposal after having seated on the same bench all along with donalara donalara gives this don gonzalo a power to use our bench that's why she advises don gonzalo here this bench that is being occupied by me is at your hand or you have the power to use it that's what she tells don gonzalo here don gonzalo and i will surely bring some crumbs on tomorrow and uh, after having advised by donalara don gonzalo he gives an assurance to lara that he will surely bring some crumbs on tomorrow while coming back to the park he will carry some bread pieces to feed the pigeons so so that to don gonzalo gives an assurance to donalara saying that uh, he will definitely carry some bread pieces to feed those pigeons in the park donalara tomorrow then and, uh, and uh, here donalara and uh, tomorrow then at this uh, particular point of time that's what we call then at this uh, particular point of time tomorrow will you be back will you bring some uh, bread pieces uh, to the park to feed the pigeons that's what she tries to ask don gonzalo here now donalara has asked don gonzalo a question here tomorrow will you bring uh, some bread pieces to feed the pigeons at the moment when you were here in the park at that moment will you be here in the park taking some bread pieces to feed the pigeons that's what uh, donalara as uh, asked uh, don gonzalo a question here don gonzalo tomorrow yes, of course so he he will uh, be here in the park taking some bread pieces uh, only to feed the pigeons and tomorrow only lara walks away toward the rides and uh, after having conversed each other now it's a time to lara to take her departure out of the park so lara walks away toward the right side of the park now lara takes her departure so she te- steps her foot outside of the presence of don gonzalo she starts walking away from don gonzalo supported by her maid as she did earlier while coming into the park now she took the support of her own maid by putting her hands on the arms of her own maid petra she got the support of her own maid gonzalo before leaving with zonato trembling and with a great effort now gonzalo before takes his departure or before he steps up to go out of the park what he does is that before he leaves the park with his 
male servant is zunaito he is a trembling which means so he shivers a lot uh, which means so he is not in a position to stand all alone as he is given a so much of pain in his leg as a, he has got a gouty a kind of a disease which gives him a lot of pain so that to he struggles very hard he can't to stand all alone and with a great effort he puts a lot of effort effort to to stand all alone so that to uh, he puts so a uh, so much of uh, effort to stand and stoops to pick up the violets lara dropped in the place of standing way lara and don gonzalo have stood each other very next to the bench at the corner of the park he has bent down his whole body that's what we call stoops which means bent so his body to take something out of the ground bends his whole body to pick something up that's a violet ear he has bent down his body to pick up those violets or group of flowers that lara dropped earlier and earlier in the previous paragraph or sorry in the previous uh, in the previous line so what do we come across is that lara has dropped some loose flowers from the violets as they were dropped don gonzalo he has made so much of effort or he has put so much of effort to bend to bend his whole body to take up those group uh, those lose one flowers out of the ground just then lara turns her head and meantime when uh, don gonzalo has bent down his body to take uh, those uh, lose one flowers out of the ground lara has turned her head towards this old man don gonzalo and surprises in picking up the flowers when lara sees don gonzalo picking up those violets from the ground don gonzalo is surprised or wondered because that with the feeling in him that she has seen him picking up those flowers out of the ground so he is wondered so he he shows his surprise while uh, he picking up those flowers he is seen by lara zunaito what are you doing senor now zunaito being unaware what had happened in between don gonzalo and dona lara zunaito asks don gonzalo a question here what are you doing senor and he is not aware what uh, happened in between donalara and uh, don gonzalo that's why after being surprised to see the actions of this don gonzalo he has asked this question what are you doing don gonzalo zunaito wait wait for a moment now don gonzalo as a uh, as advised is a uh, servant zunaito to wait for a moment dona lara aside s yes, it is e and while going out of the park dona lara in a very low voice she whispers to herself s yes, it is e while seeing don gonzalo picking up those violets out of the ground dona lara speaks to herself definitely it is e the old man one who picks up those violets out of the ground she speaks to herself that dona uh, don gonzalo definitely uh, after seeing that old man she speaks to herself that without a doubt 
it is uh, e which means uh, the gallant lover is none other than this uh, don gonzalo now she realizes or understands that uh, the gallant lover is none other than this uh, don gonzalo while he picks up those uh, violets uh, out of the ground don gonzalo aside in a very low voice it is she and no mistake at all which means now in a very low voice it is don gonzalo's turn to speak in a very whispering voice that it is she after having the scene the looking of the old woman dona lara when he picks up those violets out of the ground he as a scene dona lara looking at him while he picks up while he picks up those violets out of the ground and so that he makes a confirmation to himself that the uh, this old woman as she was a silver maiden in her younger age she is uh, she uh, she had fallen in love with the gallant horseman now she is looking at me as she was in love with the gallant horseman that's why he has no doubt at all in his mind so he makes a confirmation to himself that uh, he it is uh, definitely she there is no mistake at all there is no doubt at all donalara and don gonzalo wave farewell and both don gonzalo or dona lara they started they start to um, which we call uh, wave means so uh, which means so uh, it's a bits a good boy it is uh, signaled by hand that's what we call when we start using our hand to uh, tell someone uh, sorry to say someone uh, or show someone uh, tell someone a good boy we can make use of our hand that's what we call wave both donalara and don gonzalo have used their hand to show their boy that's what we call they have used their hand to show their good boy each other that's what we call the farewell which means it is a signal by hand dona lara can it be that this is e and finally what comes so into the mind in the form of a question in dona lara is that can it be that this is e the man with whom she was in love at her younger age was definitely he who is now in the park with whom she has a sit for a long time having a conversation each other so that uh, dona lara has a self can it be that this is e and don gonzalo heavens is it she in the mind of don gonzalo also there is a question that gets arisen in him is it she which means uh, the woman with to whom he was in love at his younger age was that uh, silver maiden really she one uh, who is in the park one who sits next to him since uh, is coming in the park so he ask uh, this question this is how both the playwrights how concluded uh, how concluded uh, this romantic uh, comedy in the very best possible manner using the contemporary elements they smile once more as if uh, she were again at the window and uh, he below in the rose garden and then disappear upon the horns of their servants they smile once more and both uh, Gonzalo and Lara as uh, they start going outside of the park both of them gave smile uh, given a smile each other as if 
and uh, how their smile seems uh, is that as if she were again at the window and already we came to know that uh, and there was a woman one who lived her life in that villa she was uh, at her window waiting for uh, her beloved in the same manner now the woman or this uh, old woman dona lara she were again at that window waiting for her beloved and how do they smile each other is that both of them remember each other how they came across those occurrences when both of them met each other when the gallant horseman came across her house holding a bouquet of flowers in the same manner both of them have given a smile remembering the moment when she was standing very next to her window waiting for the arrival of her gallant lover and when he passed sitting on the horseback below her uh, window in the rose garden and uh, tossing up the uh, tossing up the bouquet of flowers by remembering this uh, both of them disappear upon the arms of their servants and by remembering the olden uh, days when they were in love both of both the two characters gonzalo and lara take their departure out of the park which means uh, they are not seen in the park and uh, they soon disappear out of the park by putting their arms on their uh, servants uh, each other and this is how the present uh, short play a uh, sunny morning comes uh, sunny morning comes to an end and uh, after finding uh, an end to this play the curtain has been drawn down and uh, i thank you thank you all for watching this video all through the way thank you